Hello humans, my name is Kenyo and Overload, and today I'm gonna show you a fantastic Photoshop plugin that uses Stable Diffusion under the hood, and its name is Stable.art, which is a completely free open source plugin for Photoshop that uses Stable Diffusion. And you'll see that not only this plugin is super easy to install, but it is also super powerful. Now before we install any plugin whatsoever, we need to add an argument to the WebUI user bat file that will allow the plugins to connect to our local Stable Diffusion installation. And for this all you have to do is just right click on the WebUI user bat file, edit with notepad, and then in set command line arjs, you're gonna type dash dash api, and then click save. And just like that, this little argument will allow the plugins to connect to our stable diffusion. Now, usually you would need a genuine version of Photoshop installed on your computer to be able to install this plugin, because you need to update Photoshop to its latest version. But don't worry, I'm actually gonna show you how you can install this plugin on any version of Photoshop. It is actually fairly easy. All you have to do is just click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, then you're gonna scroll down until you see download the CCX file, and then you're gonna click on this little link. And this will download a CCX file onto your computer. What you're gonna do now is that you're gonna right click and click on rename. And you're gonna change the CCX extension into a RAR extension. And then we're gonna extract the content of this file using WinRAR. So all you have to do is just right click and click on extract to stable art. And now we have a brand new folder and if we go inside, you see a bunch of files. And these are all the files that we need to make this plugin work. Because all you have to do now is select this folder, Ctrl X to cut it, and then you're gonna go into your Photoshop installation. And usually it will be in Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, and then you're gonna go inside your plugins folder. And all you have to do now is just paste the folder right here. And there we go, technically we are already done with the plugin installation. It is that simple. And all you need to do now is launch Stable Diffusion, wait for Stable Diffusion to launch completely, then you're gonna select the local URL right here, so Ctrl C to copy it, and then you're gonna launch Photoshop. So then you're gonna create a new Photoshop document, and here under plugins, you're gonna have a brand new stable art option. And if you click on it, you're gonna have here the stable art Photoshop plugin panel. And to use it, do not forget to copy your local URL and paste it right here. And as you can see, now you have access to all your Stable Diffusion models installed in your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. And then you're gonna see a bunch of options that you all know from the Stable Diffusion Web UI. You're gonna have your prompt, you're gonna have your negative prompt, the seed, the sampler, the steps, the CFG scale. And then here you're gonna have multiple modes. The text to image mode, the image to image, and the inpainting mode. Now to show you how this plugin works, let's actually start with the text to image mode and generate an image. So first don't forget to choose a model. For this example I'm gonna be using the Protogen V2.2. Then I'm gonna write my prompt. Then input my negative prompt. Choose my sampler, the steps, the CFG scale, the number of images to generate. I'm gonna leave it at 4. Then I'm gonna take the selection tool, select on the canvas where I want my images to be generated, and then finally click on generate. And as you can see it has now generated 4 beautiful images that you can select from the plugin panel. And if you don't like any of these 4 images, you can also click on the generate more button to generate 4 additional images. And there you go. And what's really great is that all the images that you generated previously will still be there. Meaning that if after generating 4 additional images, so if you change your mind and you go back and you decide oh maybe this image was actually the best one, well it's not a problem because all these images will still be there. And that is really super cool. So then you have the image to image mode, which basically allows you to select either part of the image or the entire image from the base layer that you have selected right here. So either you select an area of the image where you want this new image to be generated, or you can select the entire image by pressing Ctrl and then clicking on an image layer. And as you can see now, this entire image is selected. Then you can modify your prompt, don't forget to adjust the denoising strength, and then click on generate. And as you can see, it has now created four absolutely beautiful images using our previous image as a base. And they look really, really good. And then finally, you have the inpainting mode. It is very similar to the image to image mode, but here, if you only want to change a small portion of the image, this mode is definitely better than the general image to image option. So, for example, let's say I want to change the color of our eyes. I'm gonna take the lasso tool and select this area, then modify my prompt. 
modify the denoising strength, and then click on generate. And now as you can see it has generated 4 additional images from the area that you selected right here. And then it's up to you to choose which one you like the best. And again if you don't like any of the options selected right here, you can click on this generate more button to generate even more images. Now unfortunately as you can see sometimes the seams are not perfect, again it is a work in progress, so do not expect everything to be perfect from the get go, it will definitely get better with time, but since this is photoshop you can easily select the eraser tool, right click on the layer and rasterize the layer, and then with the eraser tool start erasing all the art edges of the image, so that you get a perfect result, as you can see right here. So yeah as I said it will get better with time but to be honest this is not really that much of an issue. Because this is photoshop you have here a bunch of layers that you can modify at will. And none of the previous images that you generated are lost. Everything is still there. And that's really super super useful. The plugin also has a pretty cool feature. It has an explore tab linked to the lexica.art website where you can search for a prompt and it will display a bunch of images using that specific prompt. And once you find an image that you like, you can simply click on this button right here and it will populate the prompt box automatically. And again that's a really super useful feature for complete beginners. Now unfortunately as of right now this tool does not support out painting, which is definitely a feature that you need for the plugin to be perfect, but it is apparently in the work, so just be patient. But I think that what we have right now is already a pretty good base to start creating amazing images with stable diffusion on Photoshop, and all of that for absolutely free. So again that's pretty pretty cool. Now although this plugin currently does not support out painting, I will still give you a little trick on how you can merge two images together. So for this I'm just gonna start by generating two different images. So here's the first one and then let's generate the second one. So let's take this one for example. So now that we have two different images on two different layers, we're gonna select them, right click and then merge layers. And now before we had two separate images, now they are merged in one single image. So then you're gonna create a new layer, you're gonna select your brush tool and then you're gonna start painting between these two images. And we're gonna select colors that are present on the edges on these two images. For example you can see here brown colors, so we're gonna take the eyedropper tool and select some of that brown color and then we're gonna start painting. Make sure that for the brush layer you put the hardness to 0%. Then you're gonna start painting between these two images and kinda trying to link them together. And same on the other side we're gonna pick some of that grey color and then paint on that side. Then below we're gonna take some of that white for the snow and then continue painting. And now that we chose and painted colors between these two images on a brand new layer, just in case we're gonna make a copy of this layer, so Ctrl J, then we're gonna select this entire layer, Ctrl and then click, and as you can see it has selected this entire layer, and then we're gonna press Ctrl E. And now it has merged these three images together. We have the first image, the second image and the coloring that we did in between. And as you can see currently the coloring layer is selected. Then we're gonna modify our prompt, select the in painting option, play around a little bit with the denoising strength and then click generate. And as you can see it has now generated a sort of in between image between these two images. And all of that thanks to our coloring. Because Stable Diffusion took those colors as the base and then transformed them into something way more coherent. And although these are not perfect, these are definitely a good starting point. Because now that we have these images, we can now rasterize the layer, select the eraser tool and start erasing the image to blend them perfectly together. And now that you have this image, all you have to do is again merge these two layers together, then again select part of the image that you want to change, and then again click on generate to generate even more images. And as you can see by doing that slowly but surely your image will start to become more and more coherent. So while waiting for the outpainting update, definitely try this trick right now and make the most out of this plugin. Now there is technically another plugin for Photoshop that allows you to do outpainting and that is called Auto Photoshop Stable Diffusion Plugin, but unfortunately to be honest the plugin is extremely buggy, way more difficult to use, way more difficult to install, and there is really a lot of work to be done on this plugin before I can recommend it. But as I said, as of right now the stable.art photoshop plugin is definitely the best plugin for photoshop that uses stable diffusion. It is free, easy to install, easy to use and it has a lot of potential. And there you have it folks, now you can use stable diffusion inside photoshop for absolutely free with an easy to install plugin. So definitely try it out and let me know down in the comments down below what you think of it. And there you go, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe 
subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.